Hi there, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So on this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create a drone style video for free with Google Earth Studio. And right now I'm currently inside this landing page of Google Earth Studio. And you might be wondering, what is the difference between Google Earth and Google Earth Studio? So Google Earth Studio gives you the option to create videos based on the aerial shots of Google Earth. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with Google Earth. It's a um, Google feature wherein you can check the 3D features of the world. Basically a Google Maps version 2, something like that. So the thing here is, you need to click on this button, blue button right there, to create an account. So basically once you click on here, just enable your account, enter your email, and you should see this um, notification. So this notification means that your request has been approved and take note guys just a disclaimer on my end by my experience it took around a day or two to get this approved that means it may be different on your end may only take minutes so again guys once you see here simply click on this link as you can see right here to use earth studio simply visit this link and then you should see this new landing page so welcome back to the video right now this is going to be the new landing page basically once you are approved on the waitlist or something like that. So to create a video here, we're going to have two options. You can either open a project. Basically, if you have created before and you want to edit right now, open it on this option. For this option right here, blank project, I'm going to discuss this blank project altogether at the ending part or last part of the video. So please still stay until the end. However, if you drag it down, you see quick starts. If I click quick starts right there, you're gonna have, I think, seven options right here. You have zoom to, orbit, point to point, spiral, orbit again, flight to orbit, and spiral one more time. Basically, for this, these are the camera angles, how they zoom in, they move, and this is gonna be our features. I think I'm still gonna go with point to point right here and click on start. Now, after clicking start option right there, you'll arrive here. Basically, since this is a quick start or a template, if you may, you need to choose a location. So two options to choose a location. You can also use your mouse and hover using the globe here. You can do it manually or just for the sake of the discussion, simply type it right there. I'm going to do New York here, Empire State Building. And without a push of a button or with a simple push of a button, I have New York here. This is going to be my first location. This is going to be my start location, or rather, this is going to be my first part of the video. This is where the video will start. And then if you click on next one, set your second point. Since this is the Empire State Building, how about we go to World Trade Center? Like so. So I have a first image. Now I have a second one. Let's move on with the process here. So basically right now I have a basic general video coming from Empire State Building to World Trade Center. This is an aerial shot video, right? It's very basic, very generic. And we're going to work on this to make it more powerful, make it more awesome, something like that. So simply click on the OK icon here or check icon and you'll arrive on this option. So there are a lot of things going on here. The first thing I want you to take note of for me, the most important part is Make sure you click on this option, the lower right section, to choose the frame. Because by default, you're only going to have the first starting point. And you cannot really view what's happening. I suggest go on two frame at least. If you have access to three or four, but this for paid versions, I think. Now, once you settle the most important part for me, wherein I also want you to imply that the layout structure. So since we already discussed the most important feature here for me, the frame right there. Let's move on with the tools on the top section. If you hover your mouse on each one of them, you'll see the name or the title. First one is toggle full screen. That is pretty self-explanatory. Same goes with loop playback. So loop playback, as the name suggests, you're going to have an option to loop your video. This is, of course, the jump forward, start, something like that. This is the play icon. This is the jump or next frame. And this is, of course, jump to works first end. Basically, this is the end to see the very end of the video. Now, those are the tools on the top section. Let's talk about on the left side. 
So on here, you'll see top view, you have camera, you'll have right here north, something like that, south, or top view right there. In here, you can change it to camera. Basically, you can change the frames on what you should see. That is the next tool. Next up, let's talk about this one. We have attributes here. Now, what is attributes? Basically, if you click on attributes right now, you're going to have a lot of options here, starting from roll, 3D buildings, ocean overlay, clouds, time of day, and field of view. I'm going to discuss some of this. I think I'm going to go with time of day later on. So please stay until the end of the video. Next up, this things right here. So we have camera rotation, camera target, and camera position. This tools right here, or this attributes as we call them, are specific on my specific template from earlier. Remember, I chose point-to-point -point view. These are the features or attributes rather for point-to-point -point view. You can change the camera position, for example, for longitude, latitude, and altitude. Same goes with the second camera target, which is gonna be by my reference example, is the World Trade Center. And the camera rotation right there, you can tilt it, pan it, whatever you see fit. So now I wanna adjust the flight path. Because if you play this video right now, you'll see right there that it's pretty straightforward. It's going down, it's going up, and then it's going to come down again on the second photo, right? So I want to adjust the flight path. Now to adjust the flight path, please pay your attention on this option right here. On the left side, the Google Map option, something like that. So you need to look for the white circle. If in your end it's going to be blue, or white is the same thing. So click on the blue circle or white circle and then just adjust it, something like that. And then it will give you another little circles right there. As you can see, you should just move them as you see fit. For example, the original flight plan or flight path rather is gonna be a straight line. I wanna move it a little bit to the right and then move this options a little bit to the left. I wanna circle the flight path. Now I wanna see the changes. I'm gonna just click on player from the beginning and please pay your attention on the right section right here. And let's see the flight path. Perfect. So it went to right, go back to left, and now we're on World Trade Center. Pretty awesome, right? Now, since we covered um, flight path, let's talk about keyframes. So keyframes are what they call markers in video editing. They're going to be the markers where you can set your features so you don't have or you don't manually look for them. These are the diamonds looking right there, diamond icon, something like that. These are the keyframes. So basically keyframes are the ones or the markers or the point in your video where something are changing. For example, pay your attention here. We're going to start in Empire State Building. If I move on to the next keyframe, I end up in this aerial shot. And please pay your attention on the left section here for the attributes. As I move on, those attributes change. Because these are also coordinates this options right here so to add a keyframe simply choose this icon right here as you can see it's going to be adding a keyframe so since this is the empire state building and next up is the world trade center how about before we get to the world trade center i want to add the keyframe here and then look for something that isn't a part of our video just yet how about this little building right here and then i'm going to add a keyframe right now as you can see I have marked this exact building to be added on our video. So if I hover my mouse right now, again, I'm starting on the Empire State Building. If I move it, I'm going to land first on the specific building from earlier. Next up, I'm going to fly back in to the aerial shot. And of course, I'm going to land back finally in World Trade Center. That is the use for keyframes as a marker. Now, please pay your attention also as I move on here. For example, this is 461. And then I add another keyframe here. And then go back on the another building here. For example, I add this up. And then, as you can see right here from this building, I move on to the next one. They're just markers. Okay. So just for example purposes, I'm going to change this altitude. Let's say I'm just going to place 30 here. And then as I move on, the 30 altitude has become more of a near the street, something like that. So I'm going to show you a better example so you can truly appreciate it. For example, on this option, please pay your attention. Altitude is 204, 204. If I place this one on 30 and click on enter, 
I am now nearer to the ground. Because I have just adjusted the altitude, right? And that is how you adjust and add keyframes. And this is not only for camera position. Take note, each of the attribute has a time frame. So for camera target, another keyframes right there. Just for the sake of the discussion, let's just say, I'm going to disable this one. Click off. It's not going to follow the flight path anymore. And that is going to be the exact example since this is off for the camera target. Same goes with camera rotation and such. Again guys, those are keyframes for you. Just take note, they're markers. I know they're overwhelming and such, but please remember, they're just markers on your video. You're still in charge. Now since we covered the keyframes, how about we talk about attributes? So as of now, we have three attributes. One is camera position, one is camera target, and lastly is camera rotation. So I'm going to click on add attributes right there. And just for the sake of discussion, of course, I'm going to type the click on done. At the very bottom part, I have environment. So you might be wondering, how come we don't call it time of day? Still environment. That is going to be the opportunity of Google Earth. It should be time of day here. Anyway, I'm just going to change this one since it's going to be 1346. It's going to be 1 p.m. exactly in New York. I want to make it a little bit more darker. I'm going to type in here 1800 and now it's nighttime. How about we place it on 20? 200 and that's gonna be nighttime for you so basically all throughout this video it's gonna be nighttime and now for example i'm gonna go back there on the landing page or the empire state building if i want to see the street names if i click on this option right here i have camera top north right and if i click on view you'll see right here map style i have three options right now i have clean if i click on exploration it's going to change regarding the street names. As you can see right there, I now have Graduate Center right here. If I move on a little bit, we're going to have other street names, much less Bryan Park, Times Square, and the works. For example, I want to click on this one for everything. So right now, I have the landmarks. I have the restaurants near them. I have legends, or basically, I have descriptions on what's going on around me. It's much helpful, to be honest. Because you can see the Empire State Building properly now. And where is it located and what kinds of buildings are near the Empire State Building. And now, let's just say that we're finished. We're satisfied with our results. I'm now going to render. Now before you render, you're going to have an option here to take a snapshot of basically what's going on on your camera view. So if you click this one right here, it's currently capturing the snapshot of what's ever in my camera view or the right side of my screen. As you can see, it's taking a little bit longer than expected. If I open this specific screenshot, here we have it. Same thing, though this is just a screenshot and we need a video. So again, guys, click on render right there. And with this one, just type in a name. For example, I'm going to type in sample video here. And now destination here, I can change it. For example, I can change it to cloud renders or basically just click on download here now if i want to delete the previous one the one i did earlier i can just delete that one cancel fail or something like that also you can adjust the frames here just make sure you click on video mp4 file because by default it's on jpeg and that is not really worth it so video right there change the default settings here but on my end i'm going to retain them as it is click on submit and right now, it's currently rendering and being saved on your gallery to be downloaded in the near future. Or by your own preference, of course. For example, after rendering, you want to save it. Just go to your library and you're good to go. Next up, as promised, let's start with the blank page. Since this is almost the end of the video, if you click on file right there and click on new, blank project right there, you'll see this option. You can either save this project or don't. I suggest save it. Just for discussion purposes, I'm going to type this one as sample 23 and click on the change option to change the folder you want to save it or export it by your own preference. It's going to be there. So again, I'm just going to click on blank project, save, type this as sample 23, click save right there. And here we have it. We're now starting on a blank project. Type this one as blank project, something like that. 
make sure we're on Earth because you're gonna have an option to go Moon or Mars. I'm gonna stay on Earth because I'm not really familiar with Moon and Mars, right? So frame rate, make sure this is 60 if you have a good PC to give you better results. So click on start right now. And basically with this one, as discussed earlier, the only difference is you don't have the preset templates or keyframes here. So you're gonna make the flight path by your own. Though I've discussed how you change and how to make that one, so that won't be a problem for you. So you might ask me where to start here. I suggest starting with your first location. You can either scroll your mouse and manually look for the location, or just simply type it here. Again, let's try World Trade Center. And there we have it. Now you have your first location. Put a keyframe, move on with your second one. Let's try this one, Empire State Building. Put a keyframe, and you're good to go. Basically with that, you have just created a video. Very basic from Empire State Building to World Trade Center. Just apply the skills and tips I taught you earlier, and you're good to go. Again guys, render is right there. And thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button, subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Goodbye for now.